Good evening, two years probation. That's the sentence three teenage boys have received after admitting to sexually assaulting two boys in a locker room here at St. Mike's College School. In my hand is the lengthy explanation, the written explanation, the judge gave today for the sentence that he came to. Now we're going to get to this in just a moment, but first we begin with what was an emotionally charged day inside a youth courtroom. A warning some may find the details of our story disturbing. The judge today, Justice Wiegand, uh, made a very fair and just decision. Fair and just, those are the words used today by one of the lawyers representing one of the three convicted teens. Moments before, Justice Bryant Wiegand handed down the sentences inside a packed youth courtroom. He asked if any of the teens had anything to say. One of the boys rose, faced the judge, and said, I'm sorry for the victims and their families, and I regret my actions. My client has certainly expressed remorse uh, throughout these proceedings on more than one occasion. The any feelings of remorse appeared to quickly be replaced with joy when the convicted youths learned that they were being sentenced to probation instead of being detained. The teens rose with their families, with smiles on their faces, and hugged one another. I would say that they're relieved. They look quite happy. I would say that they're relieved. There was also a lot of tears in the courtroom. Two lawyers representing one of the victims in a civil lawsuit against St. Mike's sat in at the sentencing. We're disappointed that he didn't receive a, one of the boys in particular didn't receive a custodial sentence. In an unusual move, the judge declined to read his decision to the courtroom and more importantly to the three convicted teenagers. He claimed he didn't have the time and didn't want to be misquoted. Justice Wiegand did release his decision in writing, calling the offenses before the court very serious. Though he also wrote in part, the psychological assessments lead me to conclude that all three boys are excellent candidates for rehabilitation. The justice also turned his focus on the media coverage, writing, in spite of the fact that we actually have other serious charges to deal with in this building, the media has decided this is the case that requires society's focus. And I think it's safe to conclude that these young persons have heard society's voice loud and clear. We live in Canada and our country clearly creates separate rules and an entire separate act that we have to conform by when we're dealing with youths. Tragically, there's still two teens who were sexually and physically assaulted. Video of one of them being sodomized and raped with a broomstick is likely still saved on smartphones. The pain they endured could last a lifetime. And two years probation is the maximum probation sentence a minor can get. They also have to abide by a lengthy list of conditions. Now, some of those conditions include that they're not allowed to talk to any of the victims. They're not allowed to speak with the co-accused. And they're also not allowed to be in contact with any of the members of the 2018 St. Mike's football team. Now, they're also going to have to take some courses on subjects like victim compassion, consent, sexual consent, social media, sexting, and child pornography. As we told you earlier on City News, three teenage boys convicted of sexual assault and assault with a weapon here at St. Mike's College School in 2018 have been sentenced to two years probation. But it's not the only legal proceedings the private school is involved in. One of the victims is also suing St. Mike's. Earlier, we caught up with that victim's lawyers at the juvenile courthouse as they discussed the civil case in front of them. For the last 20 years, there has been a culture of bullying. We've spoken to witnesses who were the subject of that bullying, and we're alleging that St. Michael's either knew about it or ought to have known about it, and it's astounding that it was allowed to go on. If you're supposed to be safe anywhere, it's supposed to be in school. And this young man wasn't safe there. The fact they didn't notify police when they first heard about the incident, what does that say to you? Well, it suggests, uh, you know, a circle the wagons type of mentality that they may have wanted to uh, protect themselves first rather than protect their students. I mean, that's what it suggests to me. Now, the three teens all underwent psychological assessments. And as part of his reason for sentencing today, the justice listed, and I quote, that the youth entered an entrenched culture of bullying and hazing at their school. Now, St. Mike's also sent out a brief statement this afternoon saying, as a community of faith, 
they will continue to pray for everyone involved, but that they won't be commenting any further.